In this video, I'm going to be showing examples of how to easily identify acids and bases in reactions. However, it's important to watch our Identifying Acids and Bases in Reactions video in our chemistry playlist before going through these examples. The link to the video is in the description below, but I'm going to go ahead and do a brief recap before we get into the examples. Acids and bases are electrolytes. Acids are generally positively charged atoms or molecules, and bases are generally negatively charged atoms or molecules. There are three types of acids and bases, Arrhenius, Bronsted, and Lewis. Arrhenius acids are proton donors, meaning they release H+, and only donate two hydroxides. Bronsted-Lari acids are also proton donors, and they release H+, but they do not donate two hydroxide. Lewis acids are lone pair acceptors, which means compounds are atoms with positive charges or non-fulfilled octets. Arrhenius bases are hydroxide donors, meaning they release OH- groups. Bronsted-Lari bases are proton acceptors, meaning they are compounds with negative charges or lone pairs that are highly attractive to protons and may even form bonds with them. Lewis bases are lone pair donors, meaning atoms or compounds with a lone pair to form a bond with a Lewis acid. It's important to know the difference between Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lari acids because both are proton donors. Well, Arrhenius acids donate protons to hydroxides, so hydroxide must be in the reaction, whereas Bronsted-Lari acids donate protons, however, not to hydroxides to other molecules, so there will not be any hydroxide in the reaction. It's also important to know the difference between Bronsted-Lari and Lewis bases. One's a proton acceptor, one's a lone pair donor. However, it's often confused as to whether a lone pair donor can act as a proton acceptor. Well, a Bronsted-Lari base accepts protons, which means there must be a proton donor or protons in the reaction, whereas a Lewis base donates lone pairs to Lewis acids, not protons, meaning there are no protons or proton donors in the reaction. So now let's finally get into some actual reaction examples. I'm going to show you some options on how to easily identify acids and bases. So here's our first example, and we're asked to identify the compounds acting as an acid and a base. That might get you all turned around because nothing really looks like an acid or a base. Well first, acting as means actors or reactors, which means your answer has to come from the reactant side, which already narrows down your options. One way to determine which reactant is acting as an acid or a base is to follow one of the reactants to the product side and see what happened to it. So when we follow the left reactant to the product side and remove the alkali metal since it's only involved in salt formation, we see that it lost a proton, which makes it a proton donor, which makes it an acid, and the other reactant a base. Another way to determine which reactant is acting as an acid or a base is to remove any alkali or alkali earth metals since they're hugely soluble and always leave as positively charged ions. And when we do that on the second reactant, we see that we have a negatively charged atom left behind, which makes it a base. And therefore, the other reactant is an acid. Simple as that. Now we're asked what type of acid and base, Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lari, or Lewis? Well, remember, the acid was a proton donor, but there is no hydroxide in the reaction, so it cannot be an Arrhenius acid. And then we saw that the base is a negatively charged atom, and the acid being a proton donor eliminates Lewis, making this a Bronsted, Lari acid and a Bronsted, Lari base. Now we're asked to identify the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Conjugates are what happens to an acid and a base after they react. So the answer must come from the product side. After an acid reacts, it becomes a conjugate base, and after a base reacts, it becomes a conjugate acid. One way to identify conjugate acids and bases is to follow the acid compound to the product side, and notice, it has a negative charge and call it the conjugate base. And the other product would be the conjugate acid. Or if it's easier for you, you can follow the proton to the product side 
and call that the conjugate acid and the other product the conjugate base. So we have the acid and its conjugate base and the base and its conjugate acid. Let's try another example. Here's another reaction that might make your head spin when identifying the acid and base because none of them really look like acids or bases. But no worries, we'll use the simple fundamentals we've learned so far. Let's first remove the highly soluble positively charged alkali metal on the left reactant to see that we have a negatively charged atom, which means it's the base, making the other reactant the acid. Now let's determine what type of acid and base it is, Arrhenius, Bronsted-Lari, or Lewis. Well, there's no proton or no proton donor, so it can't be Arrhenius or Bronsted-Lari, which leaves us with Lewis acid and Lewis base. Now let's identify the conjugate acid and conjugate base. You can follow the base compound to the product side and call that the conjugate acid, making the other product the conjugate base or you can follow the acid compound to the product side, making that the conjugate base and the other product the conjugate acid. So we have the base and its conjugate acid and the acid and its conjugate base. Let's look at another example. Once again, we have to identify the acid and the base in the reaction. Notice that the left reactant has a proton and when we follow it to the product side, you can see that it donated the proton, released the proton, and became even more negatively charged, making it the acid, and the other reactant, the base. Do note that earlier in the video, I did say that negatively charged compounds are generally bases. However, this compound was negative one charge in the reactants, and became negative two charge in the products, meaning it became more negative, or in other words, it was more positive as a reactant, making it the acid. You could also follow the other reactant to the product side to see that it accepted the proton and became positively charged, making it the base and the other reactant the acid. Now we have to identify the type of acid and base. Well, there was a proton donor, which means it cannot be Lewis, and the base is not a hydroxide, so it can't be Arrhenius, leaving us with Bronsted-Lari acid and base reaction. And finally, to identify the conjugate acid and base, follow the acid compound to the product side and call that the conjugate base, making the other product the conjugate acid, or follow the base to the product side, making that the conjugate acid, and the other product, the conjugate base. Take note that even with conjugate acids and bases, the negatively charged product is the base, and the positively charged product is the acid, so the fundamental positive and negative rule still applies, meaning you can easily identify the conjugate base as the negatively charged product, and the conjugate acid as the positively charged product. So we have the acid, and its conjugate base, and the base, and its conjugate acid. Let's do one last example. One way to identify the acid and base in this reaction is to notice that the reactant on the left has a hydroxide that it loses or donates on the product side, making it the base, and the other reactant, the acid. Or you can notice that the reactant on the right side has a positive charge, which makes it the acid, and the other reactant, the base. Now, to identify the type of acid and base, well, the base has a hydroxide, which means it's not Lewis or Bronsted-Lari, making it an Arrhenius base, and therefore an Arrhenius acid. Plus, water appears on the product side, which is also an indicator of Arrhenius acid and base reaction. Now, to identify the conjugate acid and base, the left product has a positive charge, making it the conjugate acid, and the other product, the conjugate base. And you can easily confirm that by following the base to the product side to see that it donated a hydroxide and became positively charged, and following the acid to the product side to see that it donated a proton and lost its positive charge. And here's the base and its conjugate acid 
and the acid in its conjugate base. Simple as that. I hope this video gave you some ideas and options to help easily identify acids and bases as well as their conjugates in so many other reactions. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out our other acid and base videos in our chemistry playlist.